Hi, I'm David Saldran, lifestyle host, global traveler, design enthusiast, and urbanist. Join me in my travels around the city as I visit some of the best designed and most livable residential developments in and around the metropolis. In this episode, I'll take you on a virtual and experiential tour of Ayala Land Premier's Parklinks North and South Towers to imagine what living and entertaining is like with the help of a wine expert and a personal chef. In Metro Manila, one of the densest and most populated urban centers on the planet, it's increasingly difficult to find a luxuriously spacious and private place for a brand new home right in the middle of the megalopolis. Thankfully, there's still some pockets of the city where you can still live amidst wide open space and dramatic scenery. It's called Park Links, an up and coming township situated between Pasig and Quezon City along the banks of the Marikina River. When completed, this large master plan joint development of Ayala Land and Eton properties promises to be the greenest urban estate in Metro Manila, with residential and office towers and a lifestyle mall built aside sprawling gardens and riverside promenades. In many of the most beautiful cities of the world, like New York or Paris, a home along the river is always the most desirable address, primarily for views of the water and for access to a waterfront promenade for scenic walks and recreational activities. Parklinks envisions the same lifestyle in a lush tropical environment amid shops, cafes, and public parks, all connected by tree-lined pedestrian thoroughfares and dedicated bike lanes. And speaking of Paris and New York, or any great city along a river, one of the things that makes those cities so memorable are the iconic bridges that span their world-famous rivers. Now, the Park Links Bridge connecting Pasig and Quezon City is a landmark that promises to do that as well. Apart from its striking architectural design, the bridge linking the developments on both sides creates a new, safe, and convenient route for residents, making it a place where one can live, work, shop, and dine, all within walking distance of each other. One of the residential projects is the soon-to-be-completed Parklinks North and South Towers of Ayala Land Premier along C5 on the Quezon City side of the estate. Rising 55 floors, the towers provide residents some of the most dramatic views of the urban skyline, the mountains of Rizal, and the Marikina River. Indeed, the location and the development sounds really promising, but what's it like to actually live as a resident when both towers are finally ready? Well, let's find out here at the showroom. The showroom in BGC recreates a floor space, layout, and views of a three-bedroom corner residence. The 168-square-meter residential unit maximizes space for an open-plan kitchen and living room, with enough to spare for three spacious bedrooms, each with an ensuite toilet and bathroom. All units also come outfitted with Seamatic Kitchens, a German luxury brand. I like that all rooms have floor-to-ceiling glass windows with doors that open up to a wide outdoor terrace, which adds 24 more square meters of living space with panoramic views of the surrounding scenery. Apparently, this feature is common to all units, whether it's the basic 72-square-meter one-bedroom classic or the top-end, two-level, 282-square-meter, three-bedroom Horizon Villa. And so, with all this space in the unit and the spectacular views, you'll be tempted to spend more time at home than usual. Maybe even do most of your entertaining at home as well, especially since they've got this really, really well-equipped kitchen. And a favorite, if you're a wine enthusiast, this dedicated space where you can install a built-in wine cabinet. Which is why I've asked Samantha Ong of Wine Therapy to join me to discuss the basics of wine appreciation. I know people 
who store their wines in the cupboard, some under the bed, and that's not exactly the best place to put it, right? Uh, definitely not. <laughs> with the Manila weather, it's so hot, it's so humid. If you leave your wines outside, with direct sunlight, it can actually cook your wine, and it can destroy the wine inside. When you open it, it's just not gonna taste good anymore. Of course, you don't need a professional built-in wine cabinet like this high-end model. There are simpler, smaller, freestanding wine chillers you can install elsewhere in the unit. But if you intend to keep several bottles at home, you at least need to know how to store them correctly. So it's good to have proper storage like this. Mm. At the same time, you actually need to keep your wines uh, lying down flat, mm. Mm -hmm. which is like what we have here on this mm. side. All because right. if you keep it upwards, the cork actually dries out. Clearly, unless you have the storage space and equipment, it's not advisable to store more wines than you intend to drink in the immediate future. Instead, a small but good and flexible selection of wines that can pair easily with food, and any mood, is what you want to have within reach any day of the week. So, if you were to advise someone who just wants to start out a very basic, small collection of wines, whether it's for entertaining at home or for personal appreciation, what would we start with? I think if you're just starting out drinking wines, it'll be nice to start with the popular grape varietals for each country. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple of wines here that we're going to bring out mm -hmm. and then we can discuss one by one. Okay, let me help you. Okay. Okay, so we should start with this French Muscadet wine mm -hmm. from the Loire Valley. This one is actually very light, very refreshing and goes extremely well with oysters. Ooh, I like that, oysters, okay. And then afterwards, of course, we have our Chardonnay, a very popular grape for a lot of wine newbies. So this one is from Burgundy, where they originated from. And this goes actually very well with a lot of cheeses, a lot of food, so I think it's very versatile. And this would be very good for home entertaining because then you have a lot of these cheese platters and that would be the perfect match. Yes, Okay. for a lot of them, yes. And then, of course, you can't go wrong with celebrating a little bit. So a lot of people now are getting a lot into champagnes, mm -hmm. to be honest. So. And to be very clear about it, not all sparkling wine is champagne. Not all champagne is sparkling wine. Yes, or rather, all correct. champagne is sparkling wine, but not all sparkling wine is champagne. Correct. That is correct. So only those that are actually made in the champagne region can be called champagne. As Sam explains, not all white wines taste the same. Each grape varietal produces a unique flavor profile, which is why certain white wines match best with certain dishes, even certain times of day. In fact, the same varietal, say Chardonnay, can taste slightly different depending on the region, the estate, or even the plot where it was grown and harvested. It's the same with reds. So now we go to our easygoing red, which is a Chianti from Italy. Mm -hmm. So these actually go very well with prosciutto, with pizza, it's a pizza wine. I okay. would say this is like a pizza wine. So this is the wine you want to have on standby all the time, right? All the time. And of course, you'd have your Pinot Noir. Mm. A so bit more on the uh, how sophisticated side, I a suppose. A little bit more complex, mm -hmm. correct, but also a people pleaser just because it's not as heavy, mm. there's, not, there's not much tannin, mm -hmm. but there is acidity, so it's still good for wine beginners, mm -hmm. I would say. And it goes very well with duck. Mm -hmm. pecking, okay. Pecking duck as well. Oh, really? Really okay. good with pecking duck. Then we go to our heavier reds, which are these two. Okay. So you have your Ribera del Duero, which is a Spanish. This one over here. here. Yeah. Yes. So this is also quite popular, right? Because we have a lot of Spanish wines in, that are sold in, 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 in Manila. And this goes well with what? This goes well with uh, things like lamb. Okay, so a bit heavier, a bit heavier steak, red meat. Okay. Steak as well, actually. So, but it's also not as heavy that you can also pair it with things like that. And of course, actually. you can drink it on its own, right? Yes. <laughs> and last but not least, of course, we have our Napa Valley okay. Red, which mm. is our Opus One. Of course, if you have those, these are for the big, These are the big reds. Yeah, yeah okay. So you have steak night with your friends. This would be perfect. With reds, as with whites, the taste, even the weight and finish of the wine on your palate depends on the grape varietal in the bottle, such as the power and complexity of Cabernet Sauvignon in this elite Californian red, but also the region, Napa Valley, and the estate, Opus One, where the grapes are from. 
Every wine producer will also have a different way of making and aging their wines. Even blend two or more grape varietals to produce a flavor profile and character unique to their label. All right, the best part. Let's taste the wine. Of course. Without, with wine, you need to have wine glasses. Yeah, okay, that's another thing we need to talk about because then, you know, people who walk into a wine shop get confused. There's a glass for Bordeaux, there's a glass for a Burgundy, there's a glass for pretty much every wine varietal. When you're confused, how do you play safe? That is true. There are glasses that have specific shapes to them, mm -hmm. but if you only want one glass, there are glasses that kind of work as a universal glass, which... Like this. Like this. This whole swirling uh, thing, a lot of people think it's pretentious, a lot of people think it's being affected, but there's a practical reason for this, right? Yes. Yeah, so the reason why we swirl is that we want to be able to release the aromas of the wine. Mm -hmm. The whole swirling thing, not, not too vigorously, right? What's the proper... Okay, so Way to swirl. swirling is either you hold it by the stem mm -hmm. or by the vase. Mm -hmm. Never by the bowl. Okay. The reason is because it actually heats your wine exactly. from you your, your body temperature mm -hmm. and that's you don't want that. Okay, so cheers. cheers yeah. After understanding which wine to serve and how to store and pour them properly, the next step is knowing how to identify and appreciate the various flavors and aromas in the wine you're having. So when you smell it, you, you taste it, it'll be like, oh, this wine is very balanced. Okay, I like that. Balance. Very balanced. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah. Okay. Acidity is good. Okay, acidity is good. Things like that. Flavor profile, great. The finish. There. That's what you can talk about too. Okay. So you have, once you drink it, you feel how long did the flavors um, last on your palate. Mm, mm. So if normally they would say if it's too short, very watery, not a great quality wine. Mm. But if you drink something like this and then you keep it in your mouth and then you think, oh okay, it's I can still taste the fruit like 30 seconds from now, that's a good quality wine. And then there are popular myths to dispel. Although white wines generally go better with white meat and fish and red wine with darker meat, it's not a fixed rule. It's wiser to match the flavors rather than the color of the food. Another myth, the cost of the wine is directly proportional to its quality. Though the best wines tend to be expensive, it's not an absolute truth. Many affordable wines have outperformed pricier ones in blind tastings. In the end, Sam advises newbies to experiment and yes, trust your own palate. Which is why it's always good with food. Cheers, thank you so much. Cheers, I'm, I'm so happy. I'm glad that you enjoyed the wines. I have. And continue enjoying it with food. Mm -hmm. I will. Thank you so much. See ya. Indeed, wines are always best when enjoyed with food. And so while I wait for my next house guest to prepare some pass-arounds to eat, let's visualize a privileged life that's possible in this residential building. Like exclusive access to the amenity deck with its multi-use sports court fitness center and pool complex. Plus, outdoor lounges overlooking the Metro Manila skyline and Antipolo Mountains. Good wine deserves a good view. So just imagine what this would look like at sunset. There's one last thing left that's needed to complete this perfect moment. My good friend, Chef Tina Legarda of Bamba Bistro, is taking care of that. Generous spread of pass-arounds to match the wines and the friendly company. Hi, Tina. Hi. Good to see you. <laughs> so, are you enjoying yourself in this kitchen? Absolutely. Um, I think the space is perfect for what we're, we're hosting right now. Um, everything is accessible and it really does help when you prepare a, a feast like this. You're right. I mean, I just love it when if you're a, you're a cook or you're a chef like yourself, and everything is just kind of around you, right? You don't have to keep on moving around a large kitchen. Yes, and uh, like preparation becomes easier. I could totally visualize a party happening just around this island kitchen. Yeah, and, and just the fact that the dining table is right there. I mean, you know, you don't want your guests to be seated the whole night. You know, there's some action going on. Maybe some dancing or something. and Opening the and fridge. Exactly. Indeed, the unit's large island kitchen makes it the perfect spot for guests to graze, while the host, or in Tina's case, the private chef, prepares the dishes. 
an informal dinner party which is so in trend these days. In fact, you're seeing more and more restaurants where the kitchens are part of the dining space. Yes. I mean, it's, it's almost like a trend. People want to see their chefs, people want to... Yeah, and visibly, I mean, I think that's that's what people enjoy nowadays, to really see the, the chefs in action and see what they're about to eat and how it was prepared. And if you're familiar with Tina's creations, you'll definitely want to hang around the kitchen. My concept is really about comfort food, but at the same time, I wanted it to be a little bit more on the sophisticated side, but just really having fun. So speaking of fun, we have like a, like a normal mac and cheese, but to make it a little bit more uh, modern, I guess, it's a French onion mac and cheese. Then uh, we also prepared like an avocado toast, our version of an avocado toast, where we topped it with like crab and then um, topped it with pickled onions and a drizzle of spicy honey. Tina also prepared bite-sized fried feta skewered with grilled watermelon, drizzled with basil pesto and balsamic, served with arugula and topped with almonds. And yes, much, much more. Yes, there's more. <laughs> we have hungry guests. <laughs> So uh, this one is lamb ribs that um, I wanted it to be a bit more formal, but not really. Yeah. Like, you know, it's something you can be plated, but at the same time, you can also kind of use your hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed, the best food for an informal gathering should be those that guests can enjoy with their hands or while standing. Like her salmon crostini with black pepper cream cheese and truffle honey, and ensaimada stuffed with prosciutto with spicy aioli. And speaking of parties at home, I asked Tina to give some tips on how to prepare a menu, guaranteed to impress guests. To make a menu, you always study who's coming over. Mm -hmm. So you always start with that. As a chef, I can't really say what to prepare, but I think just to keep it different would just be perfect already. So variety is important. A, a variety and even, you know, different um, cuisines. Because, mm, I mean, okay. that's the fun thing about cooking, right? Okay. And cooking at home. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers for food. Cheers to life. <laughs> and now to taste the food. Yum, sweet, salty, and spicy. All balanced and good. And the lamb rib with yogurt dip matches perfectly with this Chianti Classico from Tuscany. I can already imagine the guests complimenting us, our choice of wine and dishes. And of course, this gorgeous kitchen and lovely apartment unit. Tina, this has been really lovely. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Beautiful spread. Now I can just imagine how wonderful this experience would be having your best friends, your family around you, the people you love the most. And let's not forget a view like that. Absolutely. Of the city at night. Like, I cannot agree more. Indeed, it's easy to forget that this is just a model unit, and the view merely a simulation of the actual scenery. But it's more than enough to be excited over what's soon to rise in this emerging green riverside corridor of Quezon City.